iTech World are one of the original Australian providers of low cost lithium batteries that are designed to run in the engine bay of your vehicle. Now I've tested numerous models before with a strong focus on one of their most popular units, the 120X. This battery has been used, abused, discharged and recharged numerous times over the last 12 months in my Land Cruiser and has performed very well. But iTech World have taken this already proven and reliable unit and created this. This is the iTech World 120X Pro Lithium Battery, a true drop-in replacement lithium battery with an improved 120 amp hours of usable capacity, while retaining a waterproof IP67 rating and warranted for underbonnet applications. Well, that's what the documentation that came with this 120X Pro tells me anyway. It's claimed to have all the benefits and advantages of the original 120X, however, that larger and full use of 120 amp hour of capacity. So today we're going to look at everything from weights, dimensions, specifications, installation, and of course, the much anticipated capacity test. So let's get started. First up, we're gonna talk about the weight. Now there is no doubt that one of the biggest advantages to switching to lithium over a traditional chemistry like lead acid or AGM is that reduced weight. And this 120X Pro here comes in at 12.5 kilos, which is 2.5 kilos heavier than the 120X. It is a little heavier in hand. However, unfortunately living on the road, I don't have any way to measure this. This being said, the 120X came in at exactly 10 kilograms on my scale and is a perfect match to the claim measurement. So I have no reason to doubt the specifications provided by iTech on this new unit. Next up, moving on to the physical dimensions, and I can confirm that the Pro unit is identical to that of the 120X. It comes in at 330 millimeters long, 173 millimeters wide, and 225 millimeters high. It should also be noted that the terminals are identical and placed in the same position and polarity as the previous units too. So if you already own a 120X and are looking to upgrade, this battery will drop straight in and fit perfectly. So let's move on to the technical details. Specification sheets for both the 120X and the 120X Pro claim to be using grade A prismatic lithium ion phosphate cells. Both units have a nominal voltage of 12.8, have identical cycle life ratings being 8,000 cycles at 50% discharge and 4,000 cycles at 100% discharge. They both operate within the same temperature ratings, have the same recommended charging voltages, maximum charge currents, and I think we can see where this is going. The specifications for these units are identical in every way except the usable capacity from the battery. For some reason, iTech World copped a fair bit of criticism from their 120X, with the number 120 in a title inferring 120 amp hours of usable capacity, but only delivering 105 amp hours. Now, although I see the logic with this, I don't understand the criticism directed towards iTech World as it's common throughout the industry. If we take my previous AGM, for example, the Full River 105 amp hour, we can see that from my testing, I only pulled 74 amp hour, despite 105 being in the title. This is just the way the batteries are built and the chemistry that they use within. And the same goes with these lithium units. They have to keep some power in reserve to keep the BMS or the battery management system within the units functioning and alive, even after we've drawn that full 12 volt power. Regardless of this, iTech World have listened to the market and designed this new unit here in the same format, same size, with a claimed full 120 amp hour of usable power. Now this brings us onto the next logical step, and that is the much anticipated capacity test for the 120X Pro. Now for those who haven't watched my previous battery test videos in the past, I use this little device here, which is a battery discharge tester amongst other things. And what this will do is draw down a constant current at a preset level until a cutout voltage is achieved. Now with lithium batteries, just like these two here, they have battery management systems or little chips within the casing. And this manages the charge and discharge profiles while in use. Now they do have a cutout voltage, although I couldn't find an exact specification with the documentation I received from iTech World, but looking at the state of charge sheet, we see it infers 9.5 volt. So I've set my device to 7.5 volt, as per my previous tests with the 120X, and this is just a fail safe in case the internal BMS unexpectedly fails. 
Just as with all my other testing, I've also set my current drawer to a flat 10 amp, and all going well, this process should take 12 hours to complete. Once completed, I've logged all the data and we can develop a voltage discharge curve from my testing. The discharge curve is exactly what we would come to expect from a lithium battery. The voltage remains in the 13 or high 12 volt range for the majority of the test and comes to a quick conclusion at the end of the cycle. iTechWeld also provide their own voltage discharge chart which I'm pleased to say is almost identical to my results. With this data we can also compare this to my results from the 120X battery both brand new and 6 months old. We can see the nature of the curves are almost identical, however the 120X Pro provides a longer curve and that's because we achieved a higher capacity. For perspective, the 120X brand new brought in 99 usable amp hours and the 6 month old 120X brought in 97 usable amp hours. The 120X Pro, well we achieved a very respectable and a much better than expected 132 amp hours of usable power. That's a huge 33% increase in capacity in this new battery, not to mention a full 12 amp hours more than claimed. Moving on to the next topic, which is value for money. Now, obviously prices will change over time, but as it stands today in February 2023, this new 120X Pro retails for $999, and the 120X is still available at $899. Now obviously one of the biggest cons, or at least the biggest consideration for switching to a lithium battery setup is that initial startup cost, but both of these batteries are very well priced considering the power that they deliver. In one of my previous videos I went into detail about the advantages of a lithium chemistry over the more traditional AGM and lead acids outside the parameters of just a capacity test. And this includes advantages like charging rates, discharging rates, voltage stabilities and of course the physical weight of these units. And this is what offsets the value or it offsets the high cost of these batteries and provides that value for money. But with this new 120X Pro that even further increased capacity really does add to the value. If we compare the cost to power ratio with the AGM Full River that provides 74 amp hours of usable power and retails for about 500 Australian dollars, we're looking at a battery here that costs twice as much but almost provides twice as much capacity along with all those other benefits. If we can truly receive 8,000 cycles from this 120X Pro at 50% discharge, then we are essentially getting one of these batteries for half the price of an AGM over a full lifespan. So moving on to warranties, what if we don't get that full 8,000 cycles from this new unit? And that's where having an Australian distributor comes in very handy. We have a full three year replacement warranty on these units and a further two year Pro Rider agreement, and that includes use under Bonnet too. Now I've had to use the warranty process on a separate iTech World product in the past and I did it without linking any ties to the YouTube channel and I received a replacement product within five days. I've also got friends who have had to replace some of their 120Os and it's been a very quick, easy and no fuss process. So a three and a two year warranty period is well and truly meeting the industry standard and from the sounds of it is matched very promptly, quickly and easily. Finally, moving on to the installation of this product, and although it's labelled as a drop-in replacement, there are three points that you need to consider, and the first one being the mounting location in your vehicle. Now, the best thing about lithiums in this particular unit is it can be mounted in most orientations, including on its sides. So perfect if you're trying to fit into a tight space or perhaps a canopy of a vehicle. But for me, I'm going to be placing it into the same location in the engine bay that the 120X came from. Now, although I'm sure this battery is up to the task, I'm still going to wrap this battery in an adhesive foam wrap to give it the best chance to remain within those optimal operating temperatures wherever possible. I initially wrapped all sides and in the base of my 120X, however, I found that water was getting trapped in the lower portion. So now I just stick to wrapping the four sides, and this has been working well for me. Now, the second consideration is the charging equipment in your vehicle to put power back into the lithium battery. So before you bolt it down, just ensure that you're getting those vo charging voltages as close to iTech World's specification. For me personally, I use the Redarc BCDC 1240 charger, and that contains a lithium charging profile that administers 14.5 volt at bulk and absorption and 13.6 volt at float. This almost perfectly matches the recommended charging voltages specified by iTech World. It should also be noted that charging profile A on the Redarc is also very similar 
and if this was your only option, it would also work just fine. But if you're using other equipment or other brands, just make sure that those voltages are closely matched to the specifications for a lithium battery. Now that we have the battery plugged into the vehicle, our third consideration is how we're going to monitor the state of charge of this new lithium unit. Now we can use voltages to measure the state of charge, but unlike traditional chemistries like AGM and lead acid, it's nowhere near as easy. And you can't really get an accurate indication as to where the battery sits at any given point. So for me personally, I use the Victron BMV712. This battery monitor detects the amp hours being drawn at any one time and provides a live indication of the current draw, state of charge and time remaining. This being said, it does have to be set up correctly. iTech World have a document attached to the 120X listing online that provides details required for the setup and I've already have my system set up to match from my previous battery. Because my monitor is already set up for my previous lithium battery, all I have to do is go into the app and increase that battery capacity to 132 amps. And this is gonna provide an accurate reading and a perfect percentage of where this lithium battery sits at any time. So what do I think of the new 120X Pro? Well, it sure looks and performs exactly as claimed from the manufacturer. And if it's as reliable as the 120X that came out of the Cruiser today, it's sure going to be a welcome addition, particularly with its 33 amp hours of additional capacity. Now reading between the lines here, it would appear the manufacturers used the same hardware, the same cells and the same battery management system within this package here. But they've added some extra cells for that additional capacity and that would also account for the extra two and a half kilograms of weight increase. The best part about this though is the manufacturer have done so in a package that is identical to the previous 120X, which means that it's a very common size to fit in a lot of different areas designed for auxiliary batteries, just like in the Land Cruiser 200 series here. So I guess the next question is, would I recommend upgrading from the 120X to this Pro unit? And that depends entirely on your setup and your power demands. If you're someone who is constantly meeting the capacity ceiling of the 120X and you don't have room to add more batteries in parallel or a single larger battery, then absolutely the Pro model is going to be the way to go with that extra 33 amp hour of capacity. But if you're someone who has that 120X and it's working just fine for you, then there is no reason to upgrade as all the other specifications outside the capacity parameters are identical. If you're someone looking to start up a lithium battery system for the first time or perhaps replace an existing system and you're looking at these two batteries then 100% the extra $100 you spend on the Pro model is definitely going to be worth it with an extra 33% in capacity. Now it needs to be noted that this initial battery review has been conducted in a very controlled environment. I'm yet to take it out in the field and test it on the road in the heat and with all of the appliances I've got hooked up to my 12 volt system. So although I've spoken very highly about the battery so far, living on the road for the next nine months is sure going to show us some of the benefits and maybe some of the shortcomings of this battery. And I'll be sure to follow up with further review videos in the future just as I have with the 120X to see how it performs. This being said, now that the 120X is out of the cruiser almost exactly 12 months after it's been installed, it's time to get that one on the bench and see how that's held up over the last year. But guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope I've managed to provide some useful information to determine whether or not a lithium battery setup or perhaps the 120X Pro is gonna be suitable for your battery setup. And remember to check out my last video in relation to a whole lot more detail in regards to some of the benefits of switching to lithium power. Thanks for watching again, and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.